Hey guys, hope you had a good Christmas and got to see some friends and family and just relax for a little bit. In these past few months, my channel and my social media pages have been exploding with support, so I really appreciate that. I figured I should do some sort of an introduction so you guys can get to know me a little bit if you're new here. My name is Clayton Stark. I made Stark Outdoors about 10 years ago. I originally got into filming my hunts because my dad was getting older and had some health problems to where he couldn't enjoy the outdoors as much as he used to. So I decided to take a video camera along with me on my hunts and film my dogs and his dogs work. That way he could still see what they're doing and still keep up and feel like he's a part of it. Also got into filming because if any of you have been doing this long enough, you've had really good dogs in the past and they end up dying like they all do. And, and when that day comes, you wish you could just see him go one more time or hear him on the tree again. When you actually get to film your hunts, you get to save that legacy forever of those dogs. It started off just basically for me and my family and it kind of grew from there. I went a really long time without making any videos and this past year I started making more professional looking videos and as you'll see my content's really been changing over the years. I started off with just a basic camcorder and now I have pretty good camera equipment. I'll actually be filming some events coming up for UKC. I'll be going to Kentucky to film the uh, UKC World Feist Hunt and there's many other projects like that coming in the future. If you've been around here for a while you've seen I've started doing a Houndsman Spotlight series where I travel around and hunt with the best hounds and handlers in the world. It's kind of like an interview format where either before or during the hunt I'll ask questions that pertain to dog training or just the individual that I'm hunting with. And that's been really interesting to me. I enjoy making those videos. In this next year, I've actually got a lot more of those lined up. I've actually got four new episodes scheduled for this upcoming year once the holidays are over with. I'm going to go hunt with Scott Engel and Ed Bates and then John Strickland and John Steber. Just talk a little bit about his training methods and his experiences over the years because all those men I just named have been doing this for a really long time. These videos will cover walkers, English, and blue ticks. You'll get a wide variety of training and hunting knowledge from over the years from multiple breeds. And if you've already seen the first two episodes of that Houndsman Spotlight series, you'll already see there's some pretty big similarities between the two and how they trained and raised their dogs to reach the level of being a world champion. My goal for my channel and my content is to show hound hunting in the best light and just get the truth out about what hound hunting really is because there's a lot of misconceptions about it. People don't really understand it. People who raise and train hounds put thousands of dollars into their passion and love their hound just like any other member of their family. So if any of that sounds interesting, just make sure you subscribe to my channel because in the next coming months, there'll be more episodes of the Hounds and Spotlight series. I'll have at least one episode per month of that up. It just takes a little bit longer to make those videos because I actually travel to make them. So I actually have travel time and then I have to film it and edit it and break it all down and get it uploaded so it takes a little bit and I want it to be the highest quality footage available. I was raised hunting dogs from a very early age. My first time going coon hunting I was about four years old and I'm 31 years old now so I've been doing it pretty much my whole life so I have quite a bit of experience with all breeds, coon hunting and squirrel hunting. My dad is the one who initially got me into it and my grandfather, his dad, got him into it. Hopefully one day I'm hoping to do an interview with my dad to introduce him to you guys because he has a lot of knowledge too. And Virtual Davis, the guy who owns Frogger, the AKC World Champion from the last Houndsman Spotlight series actually said that whenever he went over to dad's house it didn't matter which dog you unsnapped, Dad always had a coon dog. And I appreciate Birchall saying that. It meant a lot to me and Dad for him to say that. For someone else that's been doing this their whole life and has reached the level of owning world champion coon hounds to compliment my dad like that was pretty special. We've hunted over the years majority walkers, but we've also had some blue ticks and black and tans too. We're not really opposed to hunting anything as long as it has a brain and hunts and handles the way we like. Some people get way too caught up and only hunt in a certain breed and they kind of limit themselves. Gotta keep your options open and give yourself every opportunity to get the best dog you can. That way when the opportunity arises you're able to seize it. Moving on to the next portion of the video I want to discuss my walker pup named Cece. She was actually given to me for my son. It's his first hound. And to stay on the topic of opportunity rising up she was actually given to me by a good friend named Matt Bebout. Matt and his dad John have been great family friends over the years. We've hunted dogs together for quite a long time. Matt and John have always treated me and my dad well and they're really good guys. So Matt had a couple female pups left over from a litter he had out of one of his really good dogs and wanted to give my son a walker pup for his first dog so I couldn't miss that opportunity to get a free dog that was bred really well, did a lot of winning in PKC and UKC. When we got CC she was about three and a half to four months old so she wasn't a complete puppy, she was a little bit older. And actually when she was about five months old, I took her up behind the house and was just walking around the woods during the daytime just trying to get her used to it. And she actually went to jump and came down on her leg wrong and broke her back leg. It wasn't like a compound fracture, it wasn't anything super severe, but I could tell the way she was acting, it was really bothering her. So I immediately took her to the vet and they scanned her and it was a little break. So they ended up putting her in a cast. Had to take care of her with a broken leg for a few months. We had to do more of a rehab type training with her to get her used to using all four legs again. 
So that was a pretty big setback time-wise. She's very smart, very sweet. She's a really good dog. So I would just get her out and play with her and ease her back into stuff, not letting her get too out of control or crazy. Just let her exercise a little bit at a time. That way she didn't wear herself out or hurt herself anymore. So once she regained all of her strength back in her leg, I started hunting her a little bit at night with my cousin's dog. And she wouldn't really do much. She'd kind of just hang around. If you've been seeing my videos for a while, you've seen some videos of her. She would just kind of hang around me and my cousin. And then when my cousin's dog would tree, we'd walk in there and she'd kind of go smell around it and try to get up on it. But she never treed and just didn't really act ready. So I did something that a lot of people don't do. I quit hunting her for about three months just to lay her up because I could tell the way she acted in the woods and in the yard that she was just still a puppy. She was very immature for her age. She was just looking to play, wasn't really trying to hunt. Her instincts just hadn't kicked in yet. She hadn't had the proper time to develop. She just mentally wasn't ready. So then a few months went by and I noticed she started barking a lot more at stuff in the yard. If a squirrel or something would come in the yard, she started really barking and her voice changed a lot. It got a lot deeper, she got a lot louder. You could tell she's had a lot more confidence. She was getting a lot more comfortable. So those were all signs to me that she was starting to get ready. And at the time, I was actually squirrel hunting my mountain cur named Jax. So after one of my hunts with him, I took one of the squirrel hides from the squirrel and took it out there and showed it to her and she went absolutely insane over it, which was a big step in the right direction because before that she didn't show any natural inclination to want to bark at anything like that. So then I knew it was time to start hunting her some. So the next night I actually took her out. At that point, it was early in December. And if any of you are anywhere in the Midwest, know anything about hunting in December, it can be pretty rough. Things young dogs have to compete with in December include temperatures down in the 20s. It's been a full moon lately, which is awful for coon movement. Deer gun season's in, so that means every woods and every field has had people in it shooting and going nuts for about two weeks. There's frost and ice, which mean coon don't usually move too well in it. Just overall, this time of year is really tough for any dog, let alone a pup just starting. But I knew that she was starting to get around that time. She was showing me where she was ready and she wanted to go. So I decided to take her out to a five acre woods. It's a five acre square section that has a creek running through the west side of it. So there's always plenty of game in it and I never kill anything. I just let the animals have it and leave it peaceful and I'll just take pups in there and walk them around. It's got lanes cut through it so they can just get exercise and develop the way they should and let their instincts develop. And I took her out and it was mostly just to see how she acted and just get her back in the swing of things since she's been laid up for a few months. And I cut her loose. It was about 20 yards from the woods because when I'm starting a pup, I don't like turning them right in the woods. And I also don't like turning them loose way far from the woods because then you have no idea where they're going to go. But if you turn them loose about 20 yards from the woods, if they have any drive in them and they're ready right then, they usually take off. And then as you go, you can start working your way further back so they go exactly where you cut them. So I turned her loose and she ran in there a little bit and I had the red light on, my big dog light, just so I could see where she was going without disturbing anything and also so if I could see anything was sitting up anywhere. And she ran down the lane and there's actually an intersection in the woods where four lanes come together and there's a tree in the middle of it and there's always squirrel up and down it. She ran right into that tree and got up on it and started whining and wanted to bark. I thought that was a really good sign because she was starting to show signs of understanding that she's supposed to be looking up for stuff and looking to actually check trees and make trees. So I was pretty happy about that. So I just walked in the woods and kind of walked with her. And once I got in there a little bit, she took off and went about 75 yards and started whining a little bit. And then once she started whining, and then her whining started turning into some barks. And then she located a few times. And then she actually started treeing a little bit. And it wasn't blowing the tree down treeing, but you could tell she was treeing. So I walked in there and she was on a great big tree. I've treated a ton of squirrel on over the years and it's got a huge squirrel nest in it. So I was very, very excited because she went from a free puppy that was given to me to breaking her leg to 
constant vet trips to me rehabbing her and, and just loving her up, getting her used to being with a new owner and a new family and a new place and just treating her right, to taking her out with another dog a couple times just to see what she did and, and then taking her out with other dogs and seeing that she wasn't ready and having her not really do anything at all to now where she's actually trained pretty well. It was amazing progress for her to make and I'm really glad I made the decision to lay her up for a few months and just let her mature because I think a mistake a lot of people make, I've been guilty of it, I think most people out there that have trained pups have been guilty of it, is they expect them all to start really, really early. And she's actually 14 months old now, so she's still really young and she's just now starting to tree some. And as you'll see, it's been a very bright full moon lately and there is not coon moving at all. So I was really happy with that progress she made. She actually tracked and treed a squirrel nest. Some people get mad at, they don't want their dogs treeing squirrels, but this was her first time ever barking in the woods and she actually treed a squirrel nest. And if you've seen my Houndsman Spotlight series, you'll see the UKC World Champion and the AKC World Champion both started treeing squirrels as young pups and transitioned into coon. Coon hounds do that when they're just learning how to run a track. They'll run stuff like that and start treeing. But once they get on a coon for the first time, they really start making strides and just being coon only because that's what they're bred to do. So I was really happy with that, so I decided to take her home because, in my opinion, anytime you can end on a good note, you should end on a good note with a young dog. So the next night came, started getting dark, decided to take her out again even though the moon was still full and it was cold. And there was every excuse possible for someone to explain why they wouldn't hunt a young dog in this weather because there's not coon moving all over the place for them to get on. But when a young dog starts showing me signs that they're ready, that means I need to get out there and actually put the effort in myself and do my part instead of just sitting at home making excuses for the dog. And I need to give the dog every chance it needs to develop when it shows you it's ready. So I took her out again. I went to the same woods thinking there'd be no way I'd go to that spot and not see a coon two nights in a row and ended up doing it again. Didn't see a single coon anywhere, but she ended up treeing another squirrel nest and a den tree. So I was really encouraged about that. So we ended that night on a good note too. The third night came started getting dark and I could hear her going nuts outside. She never really barked in the yard much, but that's another way she was showing me when she was ready. She understands now that once it gets dark, it's her time to go have some fun. I already had planned on taking her again, but I was really excited now because she was really telling me that she wants to go and she's ready to do it. So at this point, it was the last day of deer season. There had been people up and down all the roads shooting at everything that moved. It was still moonlight, still cold, Every excuse in the book why a young dog wouldn't get on a coon. But I still took her out anyways because I love doing it and she needs it. So I took her to a really big section that I haven't hunted in a while because of deer season. Turned her loose. We covered a lot of ground. We were in that woods for probably an hour and a half or so. And as we started getting back to where I parked my four-wheeler, she went off about 80 yards and just immediately started treeing. She didn't make any noise on the ground. She didn't really track hardly at all. She just kind of barked once or twice and let out a locate and started treeing. <laughs> Good girl. Good job, girl. I thought she was treated on another squirrel nest. Maybe she was winning a squirrel. I walked up there and saw it was a great big den tree again, which is not surprising for this time of year in these conditions. I could tell it was broke off at the top. I circled around the tree just to make sure there wasn't nothing laid up or tucked up somewhere. Because sometimes this time of year, they might be on the outside, but they're all balled up trying to stay warm. So it might not be an obvious one, but it might be there. So I looked and squalled and I didn't see anything. So I just figured it was either a squirrel or it's inside the den. So I went around the back side of the tree to go get her. I decided to look up one more time. And on the side of the tree where she was at, there was a little hole. It was about 25 foot up. It was about the size of your fist. I don't know if you guys would be able to see it or not, but there's a hole right there and there's a coon in it. This is her first wild coon. Good job, girl. That thing is tucked in there. No track at all. Good girl. I shined my light in that hole and I could see fur balled up. She treated her first coon in the middle of December during a full moon during deer season when the temperature was in the low 20s. Typically, most people, if the conditions are what I just described, they're going to tell you to wait. Don't take a pup out that time of year. Might as well just wait till spring, wait a couple months. But she was showing me she was ready and I took her out and she showed me that she was ready. She ended up treeing a coon inside of a den. So I was really happy because if she can do stuff like that now when the conditions are its worst, in the spring when the weather's better and the coon are actually moving on the ground, she's gonna be just fine. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm really glad she's turning out to be a decent dog because like I said, it's my son's first hound. And if you want to see more of her progress, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to see more of the Houndsman Spotlight series, 
Stick around because I got a lot of big name people lined up. Hopefully some good entertaining content, also some very educational content. I hope my channel can be very entertaining and show hound hunting for what it really is. For those of you that have been longtime supporters, I really appreciate everything you do. And if you're new here, thank you for sticking around and watching this video. And I hope you subscribe, check out my videos in the future. Thanks for watching.